Woo! Hey everyone, this is Daryl from Daily Crypto Trade Signals coming to you live from Vietnam, guys. It's a great time to be alive or not, depending on your perspective and depending on how your portfolio is doing, guys. So we're going to talk about, uh, you know, what's incoming, what's incoming, absolutely what's incoming. We're going to be talking about the, you know, the Biden executive order that's going to be coming pretty soon. And remember, none of this is financial advice. And uh, this is just for education and entertainment purposes in the house guys i'm not a licensed financial advisor and you know i've got the alien in the house and it looks like we could be having a green dino day out there so that is pretty good we could uh, start to see a little bit of reversal i mean i don't mean a huge pump to the upside but a little tinsy wincy uh reversal also the pre-markets are also looking very good we got uh, one huge mexican uh, billionaire in the house is saying this is the absolute right time to be buying bitcoin keep buying keep buying and hold and wait for life-changing wealth and you won't regret it that's what he's saying in the house so we're going to talk about that we're also going to talk about uh looks like you know we could be seeing that there's a continuation pattern uh, going uh, for Bitcoin on the weekly, and if that is true, that is actually a bullish sign, not a not a not a negative sign. I assure that if we if we look in a short term time frame, frame, we're seeing that a big a big M pattern, a big McDonald pattern uh, forming for uh, Bitcoin, and that is typically very bearish and uh, we're also also going to talk about Matthew Hayward and his support levels so we broke down from one of his support levels yesterday but it looks like uh, that that support level has uh, we bounced back up to that so that is pretty bullish in the news so hopefully you know this could be a, a reversal time for for crypto for the dogecoin and dogecoin is a uh, actually coming out pretty much uh you know it's actually outperforming bitcoin right now overall so it's looking pretty good and if you look at dogecoin and the top uh, community or meme coins out there things are not looking too bad for the doji wojo right now and you know it's just being held back underwater because of the the bitcoin we're also seeing that ada is coming back up as well so if you guys aped into that yesterday based on my previous video you'll be up pretty up up so that's pretty good news in the house so let's uh let's just dial it back a little bit and let's talk about this whole executive order that's going to be happening uh, and it's coming out this week so uh, you know we have that we have the you know we have the Russian Ukraine tensions we also have the craziness going up in Canada as well so all of these things are not helping to form a very positive environment for cryptocurrency and the broader markets however we are seeing that the broader markets are uh, going green right now so that is pretty good the markets were closed because of the uh, presidential holiday so President's Day is holiday in house so hopefully everybody in America had a good holiday everybody in Europe and uh, Asia was like business as usual Business as usual. So, you know, what does this all mean, this whole executive order? Uh, you know, overall, you know, as crypt as Michael Sayer from, uh, you know, Grayscale has said that, you know, we do need comprehensive regulation for crypto. Uh, and, you know, some of it is saying, oh, look, regulation is not good. It's never good. But, you know, at, at some point, we all have to understand that regulation is inevitable. It's absolutely inevitable. And, you know, from my perspective, you know, what I really think is that if governments in the US in Europe or wherever in Asia if they're looking at making regulations for crypto that can only mean one thing is that it has become a predominant force in the financial industry and uh, that means that you know widespread adoption is going to going to continue to go from here and as Michael Sayer has said uh, from uh, Grayscale uh, that you know from Grayscale's trust and uh, MicroStrategy they're really saying that you know if we need institutions to start jumping into crypto space, we absolutely need this uh, regulation. So that is the positive side of regulation that, you know, regulation is a, a way of confirming that that uh, governments, be it in North America, be it in Asia, be it wherever on planet Earth, that they recognize that cryptocurrency is a, a meaningful force, a power that's coming, and it's fi and it's going to be financial freedom for a lot of people, and they want to regulate that. Uh, and you know, regulation at all taxes, you know, they got to take their pound, right? They they got to take their pound. So you know, in in uh, previous cycles, the government didn't care because the government thought that regulation and uh, didn't care about regulation because overall they thought that crypto was a bunch of you know 40 year olds living in their mother's basement and uh, techno nerds out there and it, they didn't care it's like cryptocurrency yeah we don't care about it uh, but now they're caring about it and it's becoming uh, you know mainstream and, and that is similar to what the internet was you know in the 90s when uh, you know the original uh, you know the original internet was basically uh, you know 200 uh, you know 2400 
dial up 2400 dial up and you know basically it was AOL we had all these little groups and stuff and it was like the internet experience is like eh, not much out there and a lot of people thought that the internet was going to you know break the world right it was going to break the world the matrix was going to get broken and uh, we can see that you know now that uh, you know everything that we do uh, runs on the back of the internet. So this is where we are with cryptocurrency. Uh, so that is the positive catalyst from the regulation. On another note, you also have to understand if we look at you know the U.S. Senate and you know Senate and congressmen and congresswomen out there, we're seeing that you know a very small majority of these Congress people and senators out there, they don't understand what crypto is and they have no idea what it is and any information that they do have. It, they don't understand it and uh, you know we had this recent uh, recently you know Canada the the judiciary sent uh, sent um, you know to uh, send a sent a message to uh, nunchuck which is a software wallet a crypto software wallet and they asked uh, you know this uh, software company called nunchuck to reveal the uh, information of the holders of the the holders that uh, downloaded their crypto software so remember this is a software wallet and uh, basically they basically responded by saying we can't help you because it's decentralized this is decentralized so the point being is that you know the difference between decentralized centralized and centralized a lot of governments don't understand the difference they they don't understand it uh, the, so they think that every everything is taken KYC so you know you know software wallets like a, you know trust wallet a metamask or harbor wallets like tracer ledger you know it, it's decentralized and there's nothing that anybody can do about it because it, it, you own the private keys so there is a lot of misunderstanding a lot of uh, gray area out there and and a lot of uh these people who are in government they're they're you know the baby boomers and they don't understand the space they don't understand the technology they don't understand blockchain so the risk the risk is that when you don't understand something uh you often uh, think it's going to be bad it's going to be negative and you often you often fight to stop it so you know hopefully with this regulation uh coming forth and you know and and uh, biden putting a, a task force this may educate uh more people uh in government and they may have this whole epiphany and this is like oh you know this like oh yeah moment where they really understand start to understand crypto and really understand that it's not as dangerous and not as bad as people think it is and i think when we have that aha moment uh then this is going to be good for all of us so you know overall regulation is not a bad thing ladies and gentlemen it's actually a good thing in the house and i believe that uh you know overall we're going to see that you know the ro the road is going to be bumpy and same like with the internet, it's going to be bumpy, wumpy, wumpy. Uh, but, you know, I think a lot of people in government are going to have this aha moment that, you know, crypto is like a, like a, you know, a freight train going 200 miles an hour. You can't stop it. You can only get it out of the way. And, you know, they also need to understand the difference between centralized exchanges, decentralized exchanges. And that centralized exchanges, you know, the judiciary, they can order, uh, you know, for the centralized exchanges to you know t freeze assets and do this but with decentralized exchanges it's difficult to do that so you know u.s president Biden is to issue executive order on crypto this week and you know the some of the areas they're going to be looking at is one they this whole crypto order is also a focus on cbdc and they also want to be able to have a timeline to roll that out because you know china has their own digital digital one right now and america's got nothing right we got we got we got jamaica with their jam decks uh, also cbdc we got other countries in uh, africa and developing countries who are moving forward we've got uh, you know singapore looking at but america is really behind uh, the, the behind behind the blockchain so basically the executor will direct a wide range of government agencies to study cryptocurrency central bank digital currency and come up with a government-wide strategy to regulate crypto assets so if they want to come up with a strategy it means that they're going to have to learn and understand what crypto and blockchain and web3 is so this is i think is a good thing because then a lot of senators and congressmen are going to have those aha moments where they really understand exactly what it is and you know they're going to take the fear out of it and then they're going to be uh less likely to push back against it because you know right now if we look at the senators and congressmen you know the amount of uh 
people that actually understand and actually own crypto is probably less than 10 percent so you know that 10 percent they understand it and you know that's why we're seeing like people like loomis ted cruz and others they're trying to you know they've been a good uh you know vocal spokesperson for the crypto community out there so that is pretty good in the house so the executive also also will examine consumer base biz, consumer business and investor protection measures and other issues that will address stable cones privacy and distributed ledger technology so of course you know the government say they they want to protect us because we're all babies we don't know anything we don't know how to spend money and we need we need we need the man out there to tell us what we can do and what we can buy i mean that's just i mean that's that's the that's a lot of the excuse that they like to use we're, we're helping you we're protecting you basically they just want to control everything so that's that's life right so the u.s government will also look at coordinating with other countries to stabilize crypto rules so it's not only going to be you know u.s wide once we have all these countries having their own uh, crypto regulations what's going to happen is there's going to be the bridge effect the bridging effect where there's going to be a global standard coming out so from that perspective once we have this global standard then you're going to then you're going to see the adopt the adoption and innovation start to explode because what's going to happen when large institutions start to ape into crypto these institutions will fund developers fund blockchain technology and it's just going to be it's going to be a, a, a huge explosion for crypto space out there so from that perspective it's a good thing i mean regulation is a good thing uh you know the the first six months to a year maybe even two years out there it's going to be a slow uphill battle uh, but as time goes on, they will understand it. They will accept it. Same like the internet, guys. So what we're seeing is we're seeing basically the internet adoption and the bubble is coming, guys. And uh, there will be absolutely be a, a crypto bubble coming. So we're seeing right now the pre-markets. Finally, we're seeing some we're seeing some green out there. The you know is a green, green, green. Uh, because we've seen a lot of red out there. I mean, I've become colorblind. The only color I've been seeing is red. And it's like, oh, that's blue that's green i mean uh, what what is that i have not seen that before so we're seeing that the dow is up s p is up and nasdaq is up so hopefully this will keep on keeping on and we can see some other things so one of the reasons why we're seeing pre-markets is up is because Biden agrees to meet with Putin in principle if the Russia has not invaded uh, Ukraine. So basically, uh, Biden says, look, let's sit down. Let's have a little bit of uh, back and forth talky talk and let's try to work this whole thing let's this whole thing out guys so that is what is going on from that perspective and uh you know also this is also out as well uh you know next bitcoin bull run won't happen until the end of 2024 says top crypto exchange co-founder well we all know that that bitcoin may not see a bull market until late 2024 or the beginning of 2025 if past cycles are any indication according to du jun co-founder of uh, crypto exchange hobby well yes if we follow the traditional cycles yes he's correct that we won't see another bull market 2024 but my hypothesis my hypothesis out there is that this cycle is different the cycles are getting extended and we can see what are some of the indicators and evidence that the the cycles are being extended one we're seeing that the amount of bitcoin on exchanges is the lowest it's ever been it's you know we've got 91 percent of the total bitcoin mined, and the exchanges are only holding uh you know a couple months ago it was 13 percent it dropped down to 12 percent and now it's around about 11 percent of the of the remaining bitcoin that is left is on exchanges so it's it's a very small amount of Bitcoin that is on exchanges, considering that 90%. So 90% has been mined, and of that 90%, only 11% is being held on exchange. So the liquid supply on exchange is super low. So that's one of the reasons and one of the indications that tell me that this cycle has been extended. The other thing is we got we have ETFs, we have Bitcoin ETFs, we have Ethereum ETFs, and I believe that in the springtime and summertime, Gary Gensler in the house, he is absolutely going to approve a spot ETF. So that is that is another thing. The third catalyst that I think points to gives me more credence and evidence that this cycle has been extended and will be extended is the fact that we have more institutional investors like never before. You know, we have Tesla, we have uh, Grayscale, MicroStrategy, we have ARK Investments, and the list just goes on and on and on. The other thing, uh, you know, reason number four is we have big companies aping into metaverse and gaming. 
We have, you know, Microsoft with their recent uh, purchase of Activision. We have, you know, the Zucker, the Zuckerberg in the house. We've got Disney. We've got McDonald's who are like registering trademarks and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, this is also very key. Hey, pop ups, just FYI. So these are some reasons that I believe this whole cryptocurrency uh, market, this whole cryptocurrency cycle has been extended. Go down there, smash the likes. Remember, none of this is financial advice, guys. I'm just bringing the information as I see it. You may disagree with me, but it is what it is. This is my analysis, guys. So let's take a look at the fear and greed. So the fear and greed right now, uh, right now is, is extreme fear. We are at 27 yesterday in the fear. We've still gone down a little bit. Uh, but tomorrow, you know, if we see some green days happening, we're going to see a nice reversal in the house. And we could see more Dino days, more more green days. And it's really good. And I know that the Debbie Downer Bear is a little bit sad today eh, uh, because it looks like we're going green, guys. So if you take a look at the heat map in the house. So the heat map in the house, we look, we got Ethereum is just flipped green. Uh, and Solana is, is a comeback kid. It's up over 6% right now. What is going with Solana? Fantastic news. And BTC right now is at 39.5. 186 and that is good because if we look at uh, if we look at um, uh, where is it where is it if you look at Matthew Hayward uh, in the house we can see that uh, you know one of the support levels that we blew down below yesterday was uh, the 39301 level so that is a huge support level for Bitcoin and it looks like that we could be you know getting ourselves back up there so that is very good and bullish in the house so if we can get back above that have a reversal trend to the upside that is going to be cool beans in the house guys absolutely Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So one other thing just want to bring your attention to before we talk about Dogecoin and this. Uh, so this is Bitcoin on the weekly. And as you can see here, we can see that the measure tops around about 69,000. We had two tops uh, here and here. But if we look at on the weekly, uh, we can really think that this is this is just an extension. This is really an extension, I think, an elongated period of a consolidation for Bitcoin. And, you know, as long as we don't break down below this level here, which is about 2,400 bucks in the house, I still think that, you know, we're forming, we're forming a bottom. And I think that we can have a huge upside and we can retest of all time highs coming soon. And I believe September is going to be the date of dates. Uh, September. Why I keep saying September? I mean, springtime. I got this September. I mean, am I getting like, uh, am I getting like, uh, you know, uh, visions from, from, from God or something? It's not September, September. I, this September, September month keeps popping back into my head. What does this all mean? This is crazy. So I believe that in springtime, we're going to start to see things uh, pumpity pump for, for, for Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is at 39200 uh, um, And as uh, Matthew Hayward has uh, indicated in the house that we need to get above uh, 39,300 and it looks like we're getting we're getting pretty close to that and that's a good support level we're still in my horizontal green zone so that is very good and as I've told you this is a huge continuation pattern here you know we had the tops of 60 about uh, $69,000 here and I believe that you know we hit the top hit the top here we consolidated down but we're seeing on this perspective we're actually making higher lows in relative to this whole structure here so if that is a validated here we're making higher lows we could be moving to the upside pretty soon and we just need to get past forty-five thousand dollars in the house guys so that is what i'm thinking about maybe you got something different to say so i really think that this is a pretty bullish pattern overall so you know dogecoin is doing pretty good right now dogecoin is uh you know we had this uh descending triangle that went back uh, all the way to december 1st we have broken out of it we went up we got rejected went back inside but this is actually acted has some nice support levels and we did talk about yesterday that dogecoin needs to get above the 12 the 1280 level and stay above that and, and that will act as huge support so we have stayed well above that so that is pretty good uh and that is looking pretty peachy keen and it looks like that if the, we can continue in this trend we could see uh us breaking past 14 cents and we could start to retest the uh, uh 15 16 cents so there is you know we've had a we've had this triple bottom pattern for uh dogecoin for some time and you know if we continue the support level we could see ourselves breaking uh up above 16 cents very shortly guys and gals so that is pretty bullish in the house for dogecoin i mean sure we're going to see that there's going to be two areas two two areas that's going to affect price one is going to be the bitcoin price the bitcoin price is going to be affected by geopolitical situations stuff that's going on in america broader markets right and sentiment so that's going to have an impact on dogecoin and then also the other thing is the other catalyst such as you know elon musk dogex 
you know, Doge one, all of this stuff that's happening that's still going to be happening and still being confirmed confirmed. So hopefully that you know if we get some positive catalysts from broader markets from Bitcoin and, and the whole geopolitical situation uh calms down. And I think it will calm down because I think the worst is over. I mean, if there is full scale invasion, I think it's already baked into the price already. I think that we've had our Debbie Downer stuff for over a week right now. So I think it's baked in, guys. It's baked in since uh, like February, February 13th, 12th, 13th, this whole Kaibashi situation has been going on. So I think it's baked in. And if there is full scale snowball throwing back and forth, I think it's baked in. Uh, I don't think it's going to affect the markets too much, and uh, I think it's baked in. So if nothing happens, we're going to see a reversal coming pretty soon. So that is pretty bullish from that perspective on the Biddy. So if you look at Biddy, uh, you know, a Biddy on the four hour, you know, we can see that, you know, we have this M pattern. We went all the way down here, and I did tell you that we would probably bounce back up the upside, and it looks like that is exactly what's happening. We're seeing a reversal coming in, and, you know, we're above the 40000 We should be getting ourselves above the $40,000 level soon if my reversal trend line starts to uh, confirm so i think that we're seeing a little bit of a recovery hopefully it's not a dead cat bounce or a fake out where we just go up people go yeah we're we're back in business and it's a, a fake out and then we uh, we crash down faster and harder than ever before i mean if we get some really nasty nasty news out there that could affect that guys but i think all the weirdness that's going on with with the uh, executive order with the uh with the you know snowball possible snowball throwing between the ukraine and russia and the craziness going up with the Canucks like what's going on up there uh, I think that people like okay you know the news cycle has been like just focusing on that nee, 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 nee. so people are getting tired of it getting satiated and it's like boring now they're moving on it's like okay whatever Canucks do your thing we don't care anymore whatever uh, snowball snowball throwing in Ukraine and Russia we don't care you know it's like we're satiated now we don't care anymore well, let's move on to the next news cycle so if the next news cycle is positive that will affect the markets and things are going to go bing up and i'm pretty bullish about that so you should be you should be kind of psyched about that so let's take a look what's coming in uh right now we got matthew hayward in the house and he's saying that you know, if we look at the RSI, we got this descending triangle, and it looks like we could be breaking out above that. We got convergence on the MACD, so it looks like we could be going to the upside, and that's what we're seeing right now. We are seeing a little bit of reversal coming for a Bitcoin, as I said, so that is looking pretty good. This is from T Fuel in the house, and he's really comparing the 2012, 2022 fractal, and he's saying that there's similarities, and we could see a breakout the upside. I mean, I believe that that's going to happen. If we look at the weekly, it seems that you know we have uh, gone up gone up here consolidated here but see this consolidation here after the alt after we hit all times highs uh back in uh, april it's actually now the consolidation is lower so if this is a springboard to the top side then that then that could validate the argument that we could be seeing possibly you know if we look at if we if we look at the delta here between the lows here and the where we are now uh, that's around 34%, right, on that delta. So if you look at the delta here, from here to where we are now, that's 20%. So what I'm saying is if, if, we, if, we, if we measure from the all-time high difference between the base, the base here being here to here, so you know it's 34% difference between this low and this low, so we're making higher lows on a weekly, and we, uh, you know, we, we take that from the high and we extrapolate a 34% increase from that high. Let me just get that in there so let's say we say this is from the average high the average high here and we take move that up 34 percent then that would take us to a confirmation of about eighty seven thousand dollars so if we follow the same pattern where we you know with the bitcoin on the weekly we went up we formed uh we formed a low we went up we formed a low again but we're forming a higher low and the difference between this low and that low uh that low is around 34 percent guys so and if we measure that to the top of here at the next point of breakout, we could see $87,000 coming in, which is exactly 34% difference between the bottom of this cycle and the bottom of that cycle. So that's what I'm theorizing that if this pattern is you know, positive and it does break out exactly as I predicted, we could see $87,000 being the next 
the next high before we have another breakdown. Uh, and that breakdown, the low should be 34% higher than where we are right now. So we could see that the next low, the next low for Bitcoin after we hit $87,000, and if it's 34%, that would take us to around about there. So our next low could be $52,000, okay, once we hit 87. So that's what I'm kind of formulating. Maybe it's weird and wacky, but that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm absolutely thinking. So what do you guys think about that? Smash the likes and comment, guys. That's what I'm thinking. So we talked about this, some other stuff that's coming in. We're seeing that the golden basis bands, and this is basically, they're looking at the golden basis band. This is from Plan C, FOMO parable at top. Uh, he's saying that, you know, we could see a top of about 107, 123,000. Overheated uptrend band is 70, 76 to 87. And that 87,000 is exactly what I just called uh, in the previous chart. So there's some correlation there, guys. Absolutely correlation. Uptrend support band, 41 to 47,000 and floor price. So he's looking at this level right now. And what he's saying is that we're in the upper support band right now. And that is pretty good. We did bounce off the floor. So I, like I said, I still think that my thesis is probably quite accurate in the house, guys. So what do you guys think? Smash the likes, guys. So uh, this is the Mexico's th third richest uh, billionaire saying, forget about selling. You'll thank me later. And he's saying that this is a fantastic time to be buying a bitty. It's super low, we woe, we woe. And uh, he thinks it's just going to continue going up from here to here. And that we'll thank him. I believe that. I think that Bitcoin is absolutely a good a good pickup right now. I'm going to be picking up some more bitty uh, today or tomorrow. Um, don't forget Thursday is my uh, DCA day. So I'm going to be picking up some more Bitcoin right now. And I think that, you know, at the end of the day, this cycle is very different. We talked about that. Regulation is coming. I think it's going to be huge. Sure, we're seeing the geopolitical events of causing a bit of a Debbie Downer, but I'm not too worried about it in the house. And, uh, you know, we're also seeing future of finance, U.S. bank partners with crypto custodians. So we're seeing that traditional finance companies must work hand in hand with crypto custodial and sub custodians and service providers moving forward. So the whole thesis here is that if traditional banks don't start to offer some crypto services to their customers, that they're going to be left behind and they're, they're going to be they're going to become extinct like the dinosaur or the dodo bird and at, at and and that is what once we get the regulation this is going to allow more mainstream financial institutions to start offering crypto services they're going to be highly regulated you're going to have to pay tax on it so, you know, remember the majority of uh, investors out there, they're going to be using centralized exchanges, uh, and, you know, things like Coinbase, Crypto.com, Binance, you know, all of these exchanges to have and buy and hold, sell, transact crypto. OK, so this is going to be highly regulated because you're going to have to go through a whole KYC and this will be recorded to the government. So you will be paying tax on that. However, for the more experienced uh, crypto uh, people out there who understand, you know, uh, digital ledger technology, understand uh, hardware wallets, understand software wallets, understand uh, decentralized exchanges, understand staking, uh, liquidity farming. This is going to be a little bit different. These people will be, you know, what I consider the expert class versus the novice class. And the novice class are going to be the ones that are going to be paying a lot of taxes. They're going to be highly regulated. And it's going to be it's 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 going to be like having a bank account. It's going to be very centralized and it's going to be very controllable. It's going to be very transparent. And you know the Fed and the regulators will be all over that, like uh, you know, white on rice, right? Is they're gonna be all over that. So, but then there's gonna be the elite or the expert class that will have the next level. And that's going to be decentralized exchanges, hardware wallets, and the software wallets. And they're going to be able to control their own destiny without too much regulation or oversight. Okay? So that is what I, uh, that's what's going to coming. So, you know, it's like, you know, the mainstream is going to be centralized exchanges. So that's why things like, you know, Robinhood, Coinbase, Crypto.com, Binance, all the other main exchanges, they're going to start to, you know, explode. Their, the total market cap is going to go up and up. up. And uh, then we're going to see, you know, but the TVL, we're going to see a lot of the TVL on, uh, you know, the TVL on Ethereum and other uh, layer one and layer two is also starting going to pump because the, the 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 current novice the novice class now are going to become the expert class of the future and they're going to be using decentralized exchanges. Uh, they're going to understand ledger technology and then 
people like me who are already in the expert class, they're going to be going into the like the brainiac class where they're going to be looking at new cutting way edges to see where there are opportunities to make money. All right. And, you know, uh, you know, NFTs, metaverse, play to game, other stuff, Web3. And what and what is beyond Web3? There will be something that's coming that's going to be beyond Web3. We don't know what that is, but that is going to be definitely coming down the pipeline. Something new, something big, something wonderful that's coming out. And don't forget on the 24th, we've got the jobless claims that are coming out. Uh, jobless claims at 8.30. That's going to be a biggie, guys. That will have some impact on the markets. If it's good, we're, we're going up. If it's down, we're going down, guys. So, you know, overall, let's take a look at the uh, leverage apes in the house right now. So the leverage apes in the house, 262.88 million have been wrecked, guys. And we're looking at a lot of it is Bitcoin, followed by Ethereum, Solana, Solana as well. Uh, and we don't see any Doge in here and we don't see any Shiba Inu right now. So that is cool beans. And we're seeing that once again, the majority of the uh, uh, leverage A positions are long positions, long positions. So I think we're going to start to see a reversal coming soon because as Bitcoin price start to go up and we start to make a move up, we're going to see the market makers uh, start to take out the short positions and that's going to create a short squeeze. And hopefully that will pump Bitcoin up and up, up guys. So keep on watching guys. Keep on smashing the likes. Keep showing some love in the house. So let's take a look at Shibi Weeby in the house. So Shibi Weeby has done exactly what I said it would. I called it exactly. I told you that, you know, we're going to get some support. We're going to get a huge impulse to the upside. We're at 26.75. So that is very good. You know, we are, we, yesterday we were at, uh, we were at like 24.99. So that is good for the Shibi Weeby army. If we can break out of this apex, then our next, uh, our next resistance line, uh, in house, let me get this out of the get out of there. We're going to be seeing that uh, we, we could be looking at 35 as the next breakthrough point, so that's pretty good. Let's take a look at Ethereum right now. So, Ethereum right now is at 27.15, and we have this uh, resistance level that's just turned green, so that is good news in the house. So like I said yesterday, we have this M pattern, we have support here, and we could be breaking up the upside. So, our next target to take out is going to be three thousand dollars. I think we're going to get there. We're seeing that the volumes are picking up. So it looks like it's a green on a day for Ethereum. So that's looking pretty good, guys and gals in the house, guys. So if we take a look at uh, Phantom in the house, Phantom is also, let me just clean up this chart. It's hard to see. So it looks like Phantom as well has just gone past our uh, resistance level that we had previously at uh, at uh, 175, 176 in the house. So that is pretty good. I'm going to change that too. I'm pretty bullish. I think this is going to be a huge pump it up, pump it up uh, day this week. Hopefully we get the, we start to see more green this week and the crypto market start to come back. We're seeing that also uh, Solana in the house is doing very good. It's at 94. It's coming back, guys. And we keep hitting this uh, resistance line at 95. So hopefully we can get ourselves past that. So, you know, we did we did go down uh, yesterday to 85. And remember, 80 was like the make it or break it point. If we'd gone down to 80, we'd be seeing ourselves going down to like 65, 66 in the house. So we did get a reversal to the upside. So that's pretty good. Let's take a look at the total market cap right now. So market cap has come up up from yesterday that is good we're seeing that it's at 1.81 uh, trillion so that is happy days happy days for the alien i love it you love it and uh, volumes are still pretty light at 48.02 billion bitcoin dollars has dropped a little bit so that is another reason why we're seeing the cryptocurrencies going up a little bit and we're seeing that bitcoin is above thirty nine thousand dollars, so that is good and it looks like we're getting a uh you know a conf confirmation on 30 days so we're up over 6.77 percent that is pretty good ethereum is also up right now at $2,700, so that's looking very nice, nice, nice. We're seeing ADA right now is up. Uh, it's at 96 cents, so that's pretty good. I did tell you, I did ape into ADA yesterday at 93.14, so that is pretty good. So I'll be showing some profits on that one. Solana is up almost 6%, so Solana is a big comeback kid right now. And uh, we're seeing Avalanche is up as well. It's at 80 bucks. Uh, Avalanche is down, uh, but it's up for the it's up for the month, so that is also pretty good. We're seeing Doge Warrior is up, guys. That's what we want to see. We want to see the Doge coin, the Doge coin and the dogecoin community should be positive should be feeling pretty happy and pretty blessed right now we're seeing that dot is up as well so it's a mixed bag but i think we're going to start to see more of the altcoins start to turn green soon so hopefully you know the the, the carnage out there will be, uh, start to turn uh, green and we'll have left carnage and things will be looking pretty good guys so that is good good news so with that being said i'm going to close it off here because it's pretty much a long one hey the aliens back guys the alien is back guys got the aliens back so you're going to love it i love it and don't forget to go 
go and follow me on Twitter, guys. We got to 4,059. Follow, follow, follow. Go down there, smash the likes, subscribe, YB in house. Don't forget to comment. And super chats are always welcome, guys. Get it, get it, get it. Do it, do it, do it. You know you want it. And don't forget to go down and check out all my Linky Winks. Buy the channel of coffee. You want it, I want it. And uh, you guys, if you if you have time, go check out the uh, NFT collection if you want. You're going to love it. I love it. So go and check out the NFT collection. Uh, if you want, you're going to love it. I love it. And uh, don't forget to uh, go and check the Weefy Wifey's channel, guys. Do it right now. Show some love over there and get the merch, guys. Gear up the OG merch. Get the mug, your mug. Get the pack, back of the backpack. You're going to love it. I love it. Let's get it, guys. So I just want to say that it looks like, you know, overall things are looking better, better, better. Things are looking more positive in the house, guys. So let's get it. Let's hopefully this day will be a green day. I'm going to get Dino in the house coming out in full strength, guys. So overall, I just want to say God bless you. I love you, guys. Without you, this video wouldn't be possible. Without my community, without the support. I love it. You love it. Let's get it, guys. Woo! Thank you.